This is the fourth video in a series on how to use Model Builder to automate geoprocessing tasks. In this series, we're looking at how we can analyze Boston 3.1 data so we can map it and aggregate it by neighborhood and, count and calculate um, standardized measures across the neighborhoods of, of the city. We've assembled, uh, we've created rather, a model in Model Builder and through our catalog, which is now uh, along, sits within a um, uh, geodatabase we created which contains a toolbox and the model. The model itself, which we can see here, is a string of processes. We see that we've imported a table, which is then created into an event layer or a, ser a series of plotted points based on latitude and longitude. That was in turn um, joined, spatially joined to the Boston neighborhoods to get a count of the number of points per neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood was also joined with census blocks in order to uh, acquire a po total population per cent, uh, per neighborhood, um, but that required going in a slightly different direction. We had to actually join the neighborhoods to the census and then summarize um, those uh, summarize the, that data by neighborhood and then rejoin that summarized data to the neighborhood so we had the total population per neighborhood. We then added a series of fields that will contain the area total area that we want as well as where we can calculate the metrics of reports per person as well as reports per area in each neighborhood. Now we're at a point where we want to calculate one more measure and that is the percentage of uh, uh, reports that have been addressed on time since one of the um, items that um, the city reports on is the timeliness um, whether or not it was an on time or overdue status. So we're going to add another um, field to contain this uh, value. So we're going to go back to our toolbox and we're going to find the um, within the fields option, uh, excuse me, data management tools and then fields toolbox, we're going to find again the add field um, tool, drag that in, and the input to that tool will be the last item in the output, nicely numbered here so we know where we're working from. This is going to contain the percentage of overdue um, items. So since it's going to be a percentage, we can make it a float. Um, again, I'll use a field alias so that we it's, it's more readable. Okay, so we can see they're connected there. All right, so in this process, in order to get the percentage overdue, we're going to have to back up a bit and go earlier in the model. And we're going to take the uh, event layer items and we're going to um, join the, uh, we're going to join the neighborhoods to the points. And that is important because what we're going to have to do is isolate just the overdue records within that layer. Um, and then summarize it that way. So I'm going to um, again bring in a spatial join here and under the I find that under the analysis tools toolbox and overlay toolbox and I'll find spatial join. So I'll bring that tool into my model builder here and what I'm going to do again is I'm going to um, join the event layer which is going to actually be um, the target in this case and the join features are going to be the uh, the neighborhoods, all right, and those will be the join features, okay. And the reason I'm doing that again is I'm going to assign essentially neighborhoods to each of the points, and then that will allow me to then um, uh, summarize the points in terms of that particular characteristic of whether or not they were overdue or not. So I'm going to check. I can see when I've connected in that way that there actually it's in a ready run state. So it's going to um, join those fields. And here I only need to retain uh, a few of the fields because all I need to know is the name which I need. So I don't need all this other stuff on the end here. I just need the names of the neighborhoods um, with each of those points. Okay, because what I'm after really is the data that's in the um, on time status. That's what I'm looking for here. Okay, so intersect is a find match, op ma match option. Okay, so that'll join um, the item, the uh, points, and so the output of that will be this item over here, which will contain um, the points again, but again with the neighborhood names assigned to them. And I'm going to isolate the overdue reports. So to do that, I'm going to use a um, extract option and what this is doing essentially 
is I'm going to select the records in this layer that have that are that are overdue and you can actually do that in a couple ways uh, you could do a query to produce a, a table um, and if you wanted to do that you would use um, uh, under the data management tools and layers and table views you could use this tool right here to make a query table um, which would create just a table or you could use this select option from under the analysis tools the difference is that select will create a new um, layer essentially of those items of those feature class of those features versus uh, a standalone table I'm going to use the select um, in this particular case no particular reason why um, and I'm going to specify that this um, is the input feature okay and then I'm going to specify what I'm looking for so it's going to create a new feature class out of that but I need to input the expression here and this is important and so what I'm looking for is to isolate the um, uh, reports that were overdue so I'm going to double click on that and then I'm going to put in the expression to um, isolate the item now because it hasn't been run yet um, I can't see the uh, options that I would normally have so um, if that were the case um, you can do a couple things one you can put it in manually if you know exactly what the expression is but if you're unsure you can actually run this process at this point to ensure to to get at it so what I could do is I could run it right now in order to get access to the data there which make, make it a little bit, make it a little simpler so what I'll do is I'm going to actually eliminate the selection first and I'm going to run it up to this point that way I actually have the data here which will be accessible within the the next tool item so I'm going to run this tool up to this point All right, so the process completed successfully. So now I'm up to this point here. So the advantage of doing it this way, I just ran it again up to that point, is that now I can bring this tool, the select tool, back in. And I can connect them. These are the input features. And now when I go to construct um, my expression here, I'm going to have uh, access to more of the data. So. I can choose my Anton status and I'm going to put in an expression the way we'd normally build it uh, if I work into a query and I have access to the items in here this is, makes it very convenient so I'll choose overdue that's what I'm looking for okay so now that's that's brought that's set up so what that's going to do is going to create a new um, item that's going to be um, consisting of just the points across the city that were overdue um, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that item and I'm going to summarize it to get a breakdown of the, to the total number of overdue per neighborhood so I'll run it up to that point again just make sure it works process completed successfully so now I have essentially a new layer that consists of just the points that were overdue then I'm going to summarize that so I'm going to go under Analysis Tools and Summary Statistics. I'm going to drag that in here. That'll be the input table. I'm going to use the um, on time status, and I just want to know the count. Okay. So in this case what I'm doing is I'm, I'm specifying that I just want to know the total number of items it really doesn't matter uh, which item I choose uh, for the count but what does matter is that I um, count them by neighborhood this is the key here is that that's the case field so that in ensures that I'm going to get a summary of the total number of items that are overdue within each neighborhood so okay okay so that'll produce um, that table that summarizes um, the total counts and then what I'm going to do with that table is I'm going to um, join that item back to that final uh, layer on the far end of my model over here so I'm going to bring in a join um, tool here and that I'll find under data management tools and under joins join field drag that in okay and so I'm going to be joining this item to this item. So I'm going to zoom out just a bit. 
so we can see this stuff. So now it's starting to get a little complicated here. So I'm going to take this item and I'm going to drag it up here. Okay, this will actually be the join table. Okay, the thing that's being appended to something else, and then this is the input table. All right. And so this will be this item over here will be the final product that we're working with at the end. Okay. All right. So the joined field on which they'll be joined is the name of the neighborhoods. Okay. And what we're really interested in is this guy right there, the count on time status. So we'll get the count of the total number of, um, uh, of uh, overdue items. So in fact, I'm going to rename it. Let's see. Oh, we can't rename it here. Okay. So that's what we're really wanting right there. So we'll hit OK. All right. So this item right here is going to be the item we want. So let's, let's organize our model again here. All right. There we go. All right. So that includes that item. So you notice how it retains that. Um, formatting very nicely for us. Okay, so we then have over here um, the feature class that now contains the um, count of overdue reports per neighborhood. So we can calculate that last uh, item which is a percentage of reports that were overdue. So of course we'll need to um, add a field that will um, contain that uh, um, calculation. So we'll go under data management tools and fields. We want to use the add field item. Um, we're going to connect this item here. This will be the input table. And we're going to in indicate the field name. So we're going to say, oh, you know what? We already have that, don't we? My bad. So since we already have the um, field uh, in which to calculate the percent overdue, we can bring in our field calculator at this point. And we're going to take this data here as our input table. The field name that we take will be the percent overdue. And the expression that we're going to run is we're going to take the um, total number of reports. Oh, excuse me. We're going to take the uh, count of overdue reports, divide them by the total number of reports, and then multiply the whole thing by 100 to create a percentage. Okay. And that looks right. All right. Um, and so there we go. So we're ready to calculate the process and we can run the whole thing. You see that I inadvertently hit the um, uh, validate model, which eliminated all of my um, shadowing, which means the model hasn't been run yet. So um, at this point, um, if I run it, I'll have to run the entire process. But I think it's worth running to, to try that out. So I'm going to zoom out to view the entire model, which uh, will look pretty small, but I think the advantage of it is that we can see, we can watch the model um, as it runs through its process. So the process is completed successfully, and we have our output uh, that we can view. So I'll just um, click on this item and choose Add to Display so we can see it. Um, and we can see that when we look at the attribute table for our output, we can see that we have our percent overdue, reports per square mile, and reports per person, all of which we can now symbolize and map. So in the next uh, video, we're going to look at how we can create a consistent symbolization scheme for this data and also have the model produce that consistent symbolization so it maps it for us.